Hey, what is up? Phil here. So I've been working with Webflow for about eight weeks after my migration. I finally feel ready to talk about my WordPress to Webflow migration. I'm going to get you the pros and the cons and some of the struggles I had in this migration and stick around to the end because I'm going to answer the question, should you migrate to Webflow? All right, let's get started. Hey, Phil here. I'm making a quick video on my recent migration for Top Sale Digital. So I had a site that looked a lot like this. And let me know if you're in a similar boat because I can help you out. But this was the old site. I'm not a huge fan. The logo was too harsh. The colors are too harsh. I did uh, the best I could, right? It's not the worst. It just wasn't there for me. So let me show off some of the things that I like about my new site. And by the way, I created some YouTube content on this uh, very topic as well. So uh, service pages look great. Services are on the home page in beautiful order. I uh, got a case study up front. Uh, it loads pretty good. It looks decent. Got my social proof on here. A good looking footer. Um, I managed to migrate all my content. My content looks good as it lives on here. And uh, I'm just pleased with the results overall of Webflow. So if you're interested in a Webflow migration, don't feel scared about SEO reasons to jump on Webflow. I think it's a great platform and uh, I'll include a link to that video. One of the things that Webflow does well that WordPress seems to struggle with is Webflow handles redirects really well out of the box, which is fantastic because in WordPress, you're either doing something with your host or you're downloading a plugin. But I just want to show you old path, new path. This is very similar if you've ever edited an HT access file. Uh, that is the coolest way in my opinion. And this is very similar. You just grab old path, new path, nothing to download. Um, when I was doing my launch, I took record of all the URLs that were currently getting backlinks and I made sure, oh, there was a typo on that last one. But uh, I was making sure that the old URLs were still getting all the links and I found instances where my old URLs don't match new URLs. So right out of the box, I was able to identify this and make those changes. So all my backlinks don't, and these might've been pointing to dead pages on. Okay, so we already have that one, fantastic. Hey, so I wanted to give you the truth about Webflow. I didn't want to just say it's great. So um, a few things that I would have liked to see is I would have liked to see um, kind of less JavaScript on the page because page speed is important. But dear reader, I wanted to give you the exact answer. So just how fast is my Webflow site compared to my others? Well, um, I've just done this is the active site. There's my my old site. I still have it lying around, and I want to do a page speed insight test. Um. There's a lot to like about Webflow. After I got the CMS navigation done, uh, things are pretty good. I've made an SEO video about why I like Webflow and yeah, there's a lot of reasons to like it, but one of the things I would have said is, hey, I would like that page speed to be a little better. And I know that's me being nitpicky and I probably haven't even rendered the, the images correctly as far as size. So partially this is on my on me, but when we go to the old site, which is built on Elementor, um, uh, this is much slower. Um, doesn't look as good, you know, and I was able to get Google Tag Manager added on my new site. My new site's not perfect. I don't want you to think that I'm the champion Webflow, but uh, there's a lot of reasons to like Webflow and I wanted to share the good and bad. So one of the things is I wish that page speed were a little higher but we do our best. Uh, I got everything I needed out of the box. Um, and yeah, I'll put a link to that SEO video, but that's kind of my final thoughts on Webflow post migration. Um, I think it's a really cool tool. And if you're interested in Webflow, uh, check out the link in my description and 
If you have any questions on this migration process, let me know in the comments or reach out to me because I want to help you out. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. So yeah, I'm sure you're wondering, hey, where are the pros and cons? All right, so here's kind of my final thoughts as I finish up this video. One quick disclaimer. Um, feel like the no code stuff is a little too aggressive because, I mean, you're going to need to learn rudimentary CSS, I think. And if you don't know, it's okay. Uh, I don't think that's a strike against Webflow. I think it's common with all these platforms. So um, it's not true no code, I don't think, but um, you'll learn a lot as you get started if Webflow is your first tool. Disclaimer number two, I'm just a guy reviewing a tool. I feel like people get very attached to their tools, maybe me included, but you know, people don't say I like this brand of screwdrivers and say, hey, I like Hammer, right? I'm just a guy reviewing a tool and a CMS is a tool and there's no perfect tool ever. Uh, so yeah, just that quick two cents. I'm just a guy reviewing stuff in his living room, right? All right, so here are my likes and my dislikes and, I, and this is kind of the takeaway. So um, WordPress folks, advanced custom forms were way cool because they added a lot of functionality. And I think in a way, Webflow, it makes it easier to get custom functionality, good looking pages, much without less effort, right? Um, especially when I consider going back to Elementor, it's like things get boilerplated and bam. The archive feature is cool for blog posts if you want to hide but not delete it. I appreciate that. Lazy loading is default. I think that's amazing. You get automatic backup, which is great because I used to crash sites like a madman. For content stuff, uh, the rich content editor is amazing because you can add forms, bed, embed, forms, video, all that. And then in my previous video, I talked about the SEO stuff that I like about Webflow. This is kind of an addendum to that video, so I'll put that link. Uh, my dislikes are, I think, it's not true no code. It's definitely low code. Um, another thing that I, this is a quibble, me coming from the marketing world, but um, with WordPress, I had these super forms that had a lot of rich functionality. And, uh, I, I just need a simple form right now, so it works, but I would like maybe to see some of that functionality out of the box, you know, uh, go. I've run into some slow to post when I'm doing some manual slow posting and updates and publishing in the platform. And I think that's not anyone's fault. Um, it's doing a lot of work. So that's just one minor quibble. And uh, uh, no preview button on posts. Uh, that seems a little weird. And my last quibble uh, on Webflow, and it's not a huge count against, is, uh, you know, CMS management when I was first starting was didn't make a whole lot of sense until I created my own custom CMS stuff. So that's kind of my likes and dislikes. And I guess the real question is, should you use Webflow? And of course I can't answer that for you. Um, definitely t look at my other video, look at this video. These are the things that I like about it. If you're tired of WordPress as I was, and if you want a good looking site, um, that's what I wanted. I just wanted a good looking site and I got it through Webflow. And I know there's plenty of other places to get a good looking site, but. This is my two cents on this WordPress to Webflow journey. And uh, I hope this has been helpful. If you're interested, check out Webflow using the link at the bottom of my page. That helps me keep going and producing more content like this. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're interested or you have questions on your Webflow migration, reach out to me or drop me a comment. Thank you so much for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.